Wow, what a week for drones. Let's take a few minutes and talk about drones. Hey guys, Bill Nichols here. I thought that I'd do a video today on the back of DJI's announcement this week of the Phantom 4 Pro, the Phantom 4 Pro Plus, and the Inspire 2, and kind of where we are in the state of drones. So let's start there before we get to the DJI stuff. So really in the drone category, you know, you've got a few large-ish companies out there. You've had GoPro release something, they've had to recall it, so they're really out of the picture. You have Unique, Unique has the Breeze at $400 or less. They have the Q500, they have the Typhoon H and the Typhoon H Pro with RealSense. Then you have Autel, Autel has the X-Star, they have the X-Star Wi-Fi, the X-Star Premium. They're killing off the Wi-Fi one, the Premium's now been reduced in price. And then you have DJI. So. I totally get there's others out there. There's HubSan, there's Chroma Key, whoever. But the, the three big ones right now, Unique, Autel, and DJI. Out of that, though, the announcement that, that DJI did this week, they've really just killed it. So the Phantom 4 Pro coming in now at the same price that the Phantom 4 was earlier in the year, $1,499. The Phantom 4 itself has been reduced to under $1,000.999. You have the Phantom 4 Pro Plus with its built-in monitor that looks amazing at $1,799. Then you have the Inspire 2 starting at $3,000 for the craft and going up to about $6,200 if you want to be able to record RAW. So let's start there. The Phantom 4 Pro, it's, um, the Phantom 4 Pro is really a game changer for what's out there right now. I would say with the introduction of the Phantom 4 Pro, they have really forced everybody else, or not yet, but they're going to force everyone else like Unique and Autel to drop their prices. Autel has now dropped the XR Premium to $699. Unique has again dropped the Typhoon H Pro to $1499. I think it's going to have to go even lower. It's going to have to go to $999 probably with the Typhoon H somewhere at about $699 like the Autel XR Premium is. And I say that because the technology the DJI has now packed into the Phantom 4 Pro, the Pro Plus, and the Inspire 2 is multiple generations ahead of where anybody else is right now. It's actually like two revs above their current Phantom 4 Pro. So I'm gonna go in really quick on the Phantom 4 Pro. This is for the 4 Pro and the 4 Pro Plus, what they've added, what it means. So the sensor now has been changed from a one over 2.3 inch, so one half point three inch sensor to a one inch sensor, uh, 20 megapixels. Now it's a variable aperture from f2.8 to f11. It's a mechanical shutter now that goes from one eighth, or from eight seconds to one two thousandth of a second. That mechanical shutter is going to help get rid of the jello effect that you see. So no longer do you have an electronic shutter in here that has a rolling shutter. It has a mechanical shutter, goes up to one two thousandth of a second, and that's going to help you create really nice cinematic video. Uh, it records 4K now at 60 frames a second. Yeah, that's in. UHD at 3840 by 2160 in <clears throat> 4096 by 2160 you're going to get 48 or 50 frames a second so in cinema 4k you can go up to 48 frames a second or 50p it's got burst shots at up to 14 frames a second it's got a it shoots at h265 so at cinema 4k you have 100 megabit per second data rate at 4k 100 megabit per second data rate at 2.7k you have a 65 megabit per second rate and then at, at uh, 1080, at 120 frames a second, you have that same 100 megabits per second. So the data rates on this are much better. The battery life is now a half hour. You have four, you have full optical avoidance all the way around. So infrared that's on the sides and optical sensing that's in the front and the back, it can do full optical avoidance at 31 miles an hour. As a comparison, the Typhoon H with real sense, eight miles an hour. When you have real sense turned on, the Phantom 4 Pro, 31 miles an hour. It can then also use that obstacle avoidance and obstacle detection for on return to home. So now with return to home, instead of it going up to an elevation and coming back to its home point, it creates a map while it's flying. And then if it has to do return to home, because either you hit the button or it loses signal, it can follow that path back. It can follow that path back until it can find a straight line back to you. And it can use full obstacle avoidance and sensing during that time. That's fantastic. And then beyond that, you've got the Phantom 4 Pro Plus now that has its screen. The Phantom 4 Pro Plus, the screen that's on it is a thousand nit screen. You should be able to see it in bright daylight. It looks fantastic. It's integrated into the controller. And then with that, it's got a five hour battery. So the battery should last five hours on that. Uh, a couple of differences, the controller now has an, the controller with the screen. I'm not sure if the controller without the screen does, but it has an SD card in there so that you can record directly onto there. It has HDMI out. 
it has Wi-Fi, it has GPS built in, it has a speaker, and it has a microphone. So if you're recording to it with that SD card that's in there, you could actually narrate the videos of what you're doing. So that could help somebody like me if the microphone's good enough that while I'm flying, I can narrate what I'm doing or I can take notes of what I'm doing. So while I'm flying, if I change the, um, if I change the camera settings, normally, if I'm not recording the screen, I'm gonna have a tough time, but I could change camera settings and now say like, now I'm at 2.7K, it's 60 frames a second, color is set to none, blah, 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 blah. And I could take notes right there on that recording and then bring that in. All right, so now let's jump to the Inspire 2. So the Inspire 2 starts at $29.99. It's gonna go up to about $6,200 if you wanna record raw with an X5S. And really this is gonna be used by professionals or very high level pro consumers and by small production houses and larger production houses. Um, there are a lot of cinema productions that use drones that are much larger than DJI, so I don't think the DJI owns the cinema market. I think they own the smaller budget cinema market, most likely, but a lot of these guys are flying with Alta Free Flies, with a lot of other systems where they're carrying red cameras or large Canon cinema cameras or Aries or anything like that. You're not going to get that with DJI, but you are going to get something that can now shoot at 5.2K at 4.2 gigabits per second for the data rate. So the dynamic range and everything is outstanding. Now at 12 stops of dynamic range, when you're, you do have companies out there that are flying with Blackmagic or they're flying with the Canon Cinema, the C300s, or they're flying with an RE, you know, whether it's a RE Alexa or an Alexa Micro, and they're getting 14 to 16 stops of dynamic range, so even more. So when you get in larger productions, they're using much larger drones, but the Inspire 2 is fully capable it can go 67 miles an hour. It can follow you at 37 miles an hour. It has a flight time now of 27 minutes. The biggest thing with my Inspire that I don't like about it, actually probably the only thing I don't like about it, there's two. One is that I often it hit, um, the propulsion limit has been reached whenever I'm flying pretty aggressively because of the weight of the camera. And the second one is that the, um, the batteries, another 15 minutes. That's generally long enough for me, but if I could fly for 27 minutes with dual batteries so that that way if something went wrong with one of them, it's still in the air, I would love that. It's got a lot more redundancies built in. And the new Spotlight Pro mode. So the Phantom 4 Pro has a Spotlight mode, Inspire 2 has Spotlight Pro. Better follow me features, better follow me functions while it's going, some different modes that it can follow you in. And then it's got an onboard FPV camera which is really important, and I'm really surprised that the Inspire 1 didn't have this. A lot of people added it, because when you have dual controller and you have one person that's controlling the camera, then that camera is being used to shoot with, and if the other person is flying in a direction and you have the camera rotated to the side, it's really difficult for them to know where they're flying. Now they have an adjustable FPV camera, so it moves in a single axis up and down. It can tilt up and down, and they can use that camera while the camera operator is using the other, so they can fly, no worries about where they're going, and now the camera operator can fully independently utilize their camera. Uh, that really should have been on the first one, but now it's there. Self-heating batteries, so if you're flying in low temperature areas, the batteries are now self-heating, self so less chance of them just kind of crashing out. 20 frame per second continuous burst on the Inspire 2. So you can now shoot stills at 20 frames a second. So you're, that's faster than a Canon 1DX Mark II. I've got one of those, it doesn't shoot at 20 frames per second. Uh, so you're shooting surf with your X5S with maybe a 45 millimeter lens, so you're a little ways back. You can now shoot 20 frame per second stills or you're shooting some skating or something. Like it just opens up the creative door so much. So going back now, DJI has really just kind of killed this market. So under $1,000 now, you have the Phantom 4, you have the Mavic. Under $2,000, you have the Phantom 4 Pro, and you have the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. And then at that $3,000 and above, you have the Inspire 2. I don't know what anybody else is going to do. Unique really needs to step up with something. I think they're going to have to drop their prices down and come out with something. I don't think the Tornado is going to hack it. Um, they've got to do something different. Autel, I don't know what they're going to do. I think that we're going to see... A lot of companies that are trying to come out right now um, either differentiate themselves somehow or they're going to go down into a smaller toy market that's like $400 and below and then you're going to have everything else and they're going to have to have some serious technology to come out against DJI. DJI dropped this and they are so far ahead of everybody else. They're probably a good year or two. We saw what happened with GoPro. You know, unfortunately, I really wanted to see GoPro succeed because one, I like GoPro, but the competition is really important. But now, like these, with these out here, I could buy an Inspire 2 or a Phantom 4 Pro Plus today and have no need to upgrade for a couple of years because, or a few years, because shooting at 5.2K, 
uh, on the Inspire 2, that's going to feature-proof you for so long, and it actually gives you some room to edit and crop into your 4K if you want to deliver in 4K. So as far as talking drones, that's it, guys. Lots of news in the market this week. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens. It looks like now DJI has stuff that they can deliver in the next one to two weeks where they're going to be in for the Christmas season, so they're probably going to dominate the season. And, um, and then we've got the Mavic starting to go out. So I should have a Mavic here next week. I'm hoping that it'll be here on Tuesday or Wednesday. Look for an onslaught of videos um, when that comes in. I should have a Phantom 4 Pro Plus here at the end of next week or the beginning of the week after, as long as they ship. So look for those. And then I've got a Premiere series that I'm gonna start. I'm gonna continue with the Lightroom series. Then I've got some other camera stuff coming up. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, any comments, comment below. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on the Phantom 4 Pro, the Pro Plus, or the Inspire 2. Are you selling what you have now to get one of those? Are you happy with what you have? And by the way, I think if you have a Phantom 4, and the Phantom 4 is delivering everything that you need, you don't have a reason to upgrade. You don't need to. But there are any of these now to upgrade to, there's enough of a technology jump that it's not just a little incre incremental upgrade. The camera change in the Inspire, that is going to help you create much better, much smoother, much less noise, less, much cleaner images that you're going to be happy with. So there's enough technology there that if you're thinking of upgrading, you might as well. But um, if you're not, then don't feel like you have to. Your Phantom 4, your Phantom 4 is still an awesome, awesome drone or whatever you have out there. DJI has really stepped it up and they're putting so much pressure on the other companies. It's gonna be really interesting over the next year to see how they make it and what do they do to differentiate themselves and to provide some competition to DJI. So thanks guys for watching. You keep watching. I'll keep making videos. Comment below. If you haven't yet subscribed, I've got some great giveaways coming up, especially when I hit 10,000 subscribers. Just as a way to say thank you to everybody. So thanks so much. Talk to you soon.